Imagine standing at the base of a towering mountain, the rock face stretching steeply into the sky above. The thrill of anticipation mixes with a hint of fear as you begin your ascent, your hands gripping the rough, cold rock, your senses heightened with every step, every breath. The thrill, the freedom, it's intoxicating. But what happens when that thin line between adventure and catastrophe snaps? Today we're exploring the stories of climbers who face the ultimate challenge. Whether it's a routine climb gone wrong, a celebration turned tragedy, or a legend taking their final fall, these stories remind us of the razor's edge that separates triumph from tragedy. As always, viewer discretion is advised. On a bright August morning in 2014, Brad Parker set out to climb Yosemite Cathedral Peak with his girlfriend, Janie Dial. The air was fresh, the sky was clear, and the towering rock stood before them, inviting adventure. Reaching the summit after a challenging climb with ropes and climbing gear, Brad proposed to Janie, and she said yes. They were overjoyed, surrounded by breathtaking views on what Brad called the happiest day of my life. But little did he know, it would tragically turn out to be his last. With his heart still soaring from the engagement, Brad decided to tackle another climb that afternoon, Matt's Crest. Now, the Matt's Crest is a long, narrow ridge that looks like a giant's spine stretching across the sky. It runs high above the ground, with steep drops on both sides that can make your stomach flip just looking at them. The path itself is a mix of rough granite that gives good grips and smooth, slippery spots that are tricky to navigate. It's a popular route for climbers because it offers incredible views of Yosemite's wild, open spaces as it winds through the sky. Climbers love it for its stunning views, and Brad was no exception. He had navigated this ridge many times before, each time enjoying the thrill and the stunning scenery around him. As usual, Brad started across the granite ridge confidently. Unlike the climb he had just done with his new fiance, Brad had no ropes or climbing gear known in the sport as free soloing. He moved with a steady pace, each step and hand placement deliberate and sure. His hands found crevices for grips and his feet pushed off solid footholds, his body leaning into the rock as if embracing it. Brad navigated the varying textures of the ridge, here gripping the rougher patches that offered good hold. They're carefully balancing on the smoother, more challenging sections. His movements were fluid, almost like a dance choreographed between him and the mountain. Every so often, he paused to scan the route ahead, planning his next moves, always aware of the sheer drop just a misstep away. This was his element, where he thrived, moving upwards and onwards with a calm focus that made it clear he was an experienced climber at home in the heights. Other climbers watched Brad from a distance, admiring his skill as he navigated the familiar route but as the afternoon shadows grew longer, something unexpected happened. One moment, Brad was a silhouette against the vast sky, a figure of confidence and grace on the narrow ridge. The next, he seemed to hesitate. Nobody quite knows what happened next. Maybe his foot searched for a hold that wasn't there, or perhaps the rock betrayed him giving way under his weight. In an instant, the balance was lost. Brad's arms waved briefly as he tried to regain his footing, but the momentum was against him. There was a heart-stopping second where it looked like he might recover, a testament to his experience and quick reflexes, but then gravity took over, pulling him away from the ridge. He fell swiftly, his body disappearing from the view of the stunned onlookers. There was a dreadful silence on the ridge where, just seconds before, there had been the soft sounds of Brad's careful movements. There was only the whisper of the wind as the other climbers processed what had just happened. The realization hit hard. The ridge was empty where Brad had been climbing. The tragedy of the moment was stark and immediate. Leaving those who witnessed it in shock and disbelief, the 36-year-old climber, surfer, bicyclist, yoga instructor, and world traveler had fallen 300 feet to his death hours after saying goodbye to his new fiancée, leaving his family and dozens of friends wondering what went wrong. 
Search and rescue teams rushed to the scene as quickly as they could, but the rocky terrain made their job very difficult. By the time they reached him, it was too late. Brad had already passed away. Because of the late hour and the rough terrain, they had to wait until the next morning to bring his body back with a helicopter. What had happened? B-Rad, as his friends called him, was an experienced climber, full of life and always seemed in control. And in reality, he most likely was. No one could have anticipated such a skilled and cautious climber like Brad meeting such a sudden and tragic fate. But that's the danger of rock climbing, and especially free soloing. You only need to make a mistake once. It's a sport that combines the thrill of height with the challenge of physical endurance. Rock climbing is essentially about climbing up, down, or across natural rock formations or artificial rock walls. It requires using your hands and feet to move along the rock while often being secured with ropes, harnesses, and other safety gear. Free soloing is a special type of rock climbing, where the climber doesn't use any ropes or safety gear. This makes it very dangerous, because if the climber falls, there is nothing to catch them. Famous climbers like Alex Honnold have done some amazing free solo climbs around the world. Rock climbing demands not only physical strength and agility, but also mental toughness and precise technique. Climbers must find or create their own path up the rock face, deciding where to place their hands and feet, and figuring out the best way to use their body weight to advance. They rely heavily on specialized equipment like carabiners, which are metal loops with spring-loaded gates used to connect parts of the climbing gear, and belay devices that help manage the rope during the climb. The risks involved in rock climbing are significant. The most obvious is the risk of falling. Even with the best preparation and precautions, a small mistake or a slip can lead to a fall. Factors like loose rocks, sudden weather changes, or a lapse in concentration can turn a regular climb into a dangerous situation quickly. Then there is the rare but possible risk of equipment failure. So climbers need to regularly check and maintain their gear to ensure it's in good working condition. And to put the cherry on top, the physical strain of climbing can lead to fatigue, which might impair a climber's judgment or physical ability, increasing the risk of an accident. For solo climbers like Brad, these risks are even bigger because they climb alone and with no gear. They have no one to help if they fall or to help make decisions. And this adds more challenge because they have to handle fear and stress by themselves. What makes Brad's story chilling isn't just the abrupt end to what should have been one of the happiest days of his life, but how swiftly joy turned to heartbreak for everyone who knew him. But Brad's story isn't alone in its shocking conclusion. The sport of rock climbing has a horrifying trail of fatalities, some with ropes and some without. On June 2, 2018, Rangers at Yosemite National Park received urgent 911 calls from multiple sources about a tragic incident unfolding on the formidable granite face of El Capitan. It was a distress call made early that morning for two well-known and highly experienced climbers, Jason Wells, aged 46, from Boulder, Colorado, and Tim Klein, aged 42, from Palmdale, California. Jason and Tim were longtime friends and climbing partners who had met in college in San Diego and had since conquered many of the world's most challenging climbs together. Both were exceptionally skilled climbers, each with decades of experience that included numerous successful ascents of El Capitan, one of the most daunting granite walls in the world. On that fateful day, they chose to ascend the Salate Wall, a tall, well-known, 35-pitch root section of El Capitan's 3,000-foot granite face. In rock climbing, a pitch is a part of the climb between two resting points. At these points, climbers can take a break, regroup, or switch leaders. Each pitch is climbed using one length of rope, usually about 165 to 200 feet long. Climbers finish one pitch, secure themselves at the belay point, and then climb the next pitch. Now the Salathay wall was notorious for its sheer expanse and the technical challenge it poses. One legendary climber even described it like walking on a sheet of glass. But if anyone could handle this route, it was Jason and Tim. 
They had scaled this route several times before, and their movements finely tuned to each other's through years of shared climbs. It wasn't uncommon for the pair to climb the 3,000-foot formation, a wall that takes most experienced parties several days, multiple times together in the same weekend, or sometimes twice in one day. On June 2nd, Tim and Jason woke up early and went to El Cap Bridge to meet another friend, Kevin Prince. Tim and Jason usually climbed together, but this time they had invited Kevin, a medical resident Tim had met in 2009, while working with the Yosemite search and rescue team. The morning began with the usual preparations, gear checks, route discussions, and the shared anticipation of a climb they both loved. They got to the base of El Cap just after the sun came up. They chose to climb via the free blast route, as they had done many times before. They climbed in what Kevin calls caterpillar style. Jason and Tim were connected by one rope, and Tim and Kevin by another. Jason would climb a pitch, attach the rope to an anchor, then Tim would follow, using climbing aids to move up the rope until he reached the anchor. Then he would secure himself, prepare Jason's rope for the next pitch, and arrange the second rope for Kevin to come up. This shows how much they trusted each other because this way of climbing can be very risky. On the plus side, this method allows climbers to ascend fast, which can save time but increases the risks if one climber encounters trouble. The absence of fixed safety points means there is nothing to arrest a fall immediately, making any error potentially catastrophic. The three of them moved swiftly up the rock, which felt as familiar as their daily commute. By the third pitch, Jason had reached two young climbers, Jordan Cannon and Jeremy Schoenborn, who were trying a free climb on a nearby route. After a short rest, the group continued the climb, leaving Jordan and Jeremy behind. As the group ascended, Jason and Tim moved quickly, as they had done this many times before already. They had climbed about 100 feet of easy terrain before reaching the most difficult part of the climb, a rock section known as Half Dollar. Here they had to navigate through a narrow fissure nearly 1,000 feet off the ground. This point is where the climbing became technically challenging, as it requires climbers to navigate through narrow fissures and overhanging rocks. But Jason and Tim climbed this section simultaneously, which was possible due to their high skill level and deep trust in each other's abilities. As expected, Jason and Tim got to the top of the half dollar without any issues. At the top, Tim fixed Kevin's rope to an anchor so he could follow behind them, using the same route. But as Kevin climbed, he couldn't see Jason and Tim due to the rock formations. Meanwhile, Jason and Tim decided to keep moving forward. They entered an easier stretch, leading to Mammoth Terraces, the easiest part of the route. This section was so easy that Tim and Jason often climbed it at the same time. Unfortunately, that decision would prove to have terrible consequences. The climb was going smoothly when suddenly things went terribly wrong. At around 8.05 a.m., Kevin, the third member of the party, was still climbing the half dollar when he heard sudden alarming noises. He looked up and saw two bodies falling through the air, less than 50 feet away. Their rope, which should have stopped them, got caught on a rock but then snapped. Both men fell about 1,000 feet to the ground. Kevin rushed to the top, hoping the falling climbers weren't Tim and Jason. When he reached a spot where he could see the route above, he realized it might have been them. He called 911 to report the accident. The impact of their fall was devastating. Park rangers and search and rescue teams, alerted by the calls, responded swiftly. They reached the base of El Capitan, where Jason and Tim had landed, but it was quickly apparent that nothing could be done. The force of landing from those kinds of heights are fatal. Jason Wells and Tim Klein were well-known and respected climbers. Preliminary investigations concluded that at some point during their ascent, something went wrong. Perhaps it was a slip, a missed hold, or a piece of gear that failed under unexpected stress. The exact details remain unclear. A more detailed accident report from Yosemite Rangers later suggested that Tim and Jason had not placed any protective gear in the section where they fell. The easy climbing nature of the terrain might have led them to use less protection, but unfortunately an unprotected fall that high up can have catastrophic consequences. 
Now, Tim and Jason weren't reckless. They were experienced climbers who loved climbing. But no matter how experienced or careful, every climber is subject to the same laws of gravity and nature. More disturbingly, their accident marks the 25th accident resulting in a fatality on El Capitan. Yes, you heard that right. 25th. Despite what you'd expect, sport climbing is surprisingly risky. Statistics show more than 100 climbing accidents happen each year in Yosemite National Park alone, with about 15 to 25 of these requiring serious rescue efforts. You might think this sounds crazy, so why do rock climbers consciously take this risk? For Brad Gobright, the allure of climbing came from its unique blend of physical challenge, mental discipline, and the profound connection to nature. Brad was a legend in the rock climbing community. He was a renowned American free solo climber, pursued climbing not just as a sport, but as a way of life. Born in California in 1988, Brad's passion for climbing started at a young age. By the time he was six, he was already scaling heights that would make most people dizzy. He pursued climbing with a fervor that led him to drop out of community college, choosing instead to dedicate his entire life to conquering peaks across North America. To support his climbing expeditions, Brad lived out of his Honda Civic and worked various odd jobs. His lifestyle was a testament to his dedication. It was all about the climb. What made Brad stand out amongst his peers was his exceptional skill in free solo climbing. Like we mentioned earlier, free solo climbing is a type of rock climbing where the climber ascends without using any ropes, harnesses, or protective gear. It's just the climber, their climbing shoes, and the rock face. This style of climbing is considered the purest and most daring form of the sport because there's no safety equipment to catch you if you fall. The climber relies entirely on their strength, skill, and mental focus to navigate the climb. The appeal of free solo climbing lies in the intense freedom it offers. Climbers feel a deep connection to the rock and their surroundings, moving in a rhythm that feels almost like a dance. It requires absolute confidence and precise control over every movement, because even a small mistake can have serious consequences. Free solo climbing also demands a high level of mental toughness. Climbers must manage their fear and stay completely focused on the present moment. It's a mentally and physically challenging sport that tests the limits of what climbers can achieve when they rely solely on their own abilities. For those who practice it, free solo climbing is more than just climbing. It's a profound way to experience the sheer joy of overcoming challenges and experiencing the world from breathtaking heights. And no one understood that better than Brad. Over the years, Brad made a name for himself not only for his bold climbs, but also for his speed. He famously set a record on the nose of El Capitan in Yosemite National Park, completing the route in just two hours and 19 minutes, a record that stood proudly until it was surpassed. At 31, Brad was already a legend in the climbing world. His record-setting ascent, his uninhibited love for mountains, and his almost death-defying style of climbing had captivated climbers and spectators alike. Brad's passion and deep-seated need to push his limits, to see how far he could go, and to perfect his art with every climb. His dedication was evident in his approach to free soloing, climbing without any safety gear, where the stakes are as high as they can get. And unfortunately, it was this unbridled pursuit that led to a tragic end. On a crisp November day in 2019, Brad Gobright set out for what would be his final climb at El Potrero Chico, a renowned climbing spot in northern Mexico, known for its challenging routes and breathtaking vistas. The day began with the usual excitement and preparation, as Brad and his climbing partner, Aiden Jacobson, geared up for a descent that required both skill and precision. Although he was best known for his daring free solo ascents, on that day he was repelling, a technique involving descending with ropes. They opted for simul repelling, a faster yet riskier method of descending where two climbers balance each other's weight on opposite strands of the same rope. This technique allows climbers to descend simultaneously, 
but it depends heavily on each climber's vigilance and the reliability of their gear. As Brad and Aiden started their rappel, everything seemed normal. Aiden was slightly above Brad, each on their respective strands of the rope. The atmosphere was one of focused intensity, with the silence broken only by the occasional call to each other to check in. The descent was progressing smoothly, until suddenly, a critical failure occurred. Aiden recalls the moment with chilling clarity. We started rapping, he told Outside Magazine. I was a bit above him. I was on the left. He was on the right. Then all of a sudden I felt a pop and we started dropping. It was a heart-stopping moment, the kind every climber dreads. Aiden felt his stomach lurch as the rope gave way. In those terrifying seconds, Brad and Aiden were in free fall. Aiden crashed through a bush, which cushioned his fall somewhat before he struck a ledge. Miraculously, he survived with only minor injuries. But for Brad, the outcome was much worse. He screamed, a sharp, harrowing sound that pierced the air. Aiden, still reeling from his own fall, heard the scream cut off abruptly. It was basically a blur, Aiden remembered. He screamed. I screamed. I went through some vegetation and then all I remember is seeing his blue Gramici shirt bounce over the edge. Down below, other climbers and witnesses could only watch in horror. One of them, who later spoke to rescuers, described the scene. It happened so fast. One moment Brad was descending, the next he was just… gone. The rescue operation began immediately, with the local civil defense and climbing community mobilizing to recover Brad. But it was too late. He had fallen 600 feet straight into the ground with nothing to break his fall. By the time the rescuers reached him, Brad had already succumbed to his injuries. The climbing world was left to mourn the loss of one of its brightest stars, a climber who pursued his passion to the absolute limits. Climbers often speak of the deep satisfaction derived from conquering a difficult route, the sense of accomplishment that comes from pushing one's limits, and the sheer beauty of the views that such climbs afford. Nathaniel Masahi Takatsuno, known affectionately as Nate, embodied this spirit to its fullest. At just 22 years old, Nate would take his final climb on El Cajon Mountain, a place where he had felt a profound connection to the rock and the natural world around him. El Cajon Mountain, located in San Diego County, California, is a popular destination for rock climbers. There are a variety of climbing routes with different levels of difficulty on the mountain, making it a favorite among both novice and experienced climbers. The mountain's granite face offers challenging climbs that attract climbers seeking to test their skills. In rock climbing, there is a system to rates the difficulty of a climb. The most common one employed is the Yosemite Decimal System YDS. This rating system classifies climbs based on their technical difficulty and the skills required to complete them. In this system, ratings for a rock climb ranges from Class 1, which is easy hiking on a trail, to Class 5, which involves technical rock climbing requiring ropes and protection. Within Class 5, the YDS further breaks down the difficulty from 5.0 to 5.15, with increasing levels of difficulty and technical skill required. The difficulty of climbs on El Cajon Mountain ranges widely. While there are routes accessible to beginners, there are routes ranked 5.12, which means they are considered very difficult and typically require advanced climbing techniques and significant experience. But no matter the difficulty of the climb, Nate was more than ready for the challenge born and raised in the Bay Area. Nate always saw the Sierra Nevadas as his backyard playground. Nate's passion for climbing was known to everyone who knew him. Nearly every evening he could be found at a climbing gym, honing his skills and joking with friends about the roots. On December 4th, 2022, Nate was in high spirits, greeting fellow climbers with enthusiasm and sharing his excitement for the day's climbs on routes like Leonids and Meteor. His infectious joy for climbing was evident to all who crossed paths with him. He thought it would be just another normal day of climbing. Like Brad, Nate loved free solo climbing because it let him feel a strong, direct connection with the mountains. 
However, this type of climbing doesn't have the safety of ropes if something goes wrong. And on this climb, something did go wrong. On that fateful Sunday, Nathaniel was as usual, embracing the challenge of free solo climbing, moving up the rock face of the iconic El Cajon Mountain. According to James Fairber, a witness at the scene, Nate was equipped with a harness and had a rope in his backpack. This was probably for coming back down after reaching the top, but Nate chose to climb up without using the rope, enjoying the full experience of free solo climbing. As Nate made his way up the challenging routes, he moved carefully and smoothly. The day was clear and seemed perfect for climbing. James and other climbers watched from different spots, impressed by Nate's skill and bravery. However, even perfect conditions and great skills can't remove all the risks of climbing, especially when you're climbing without ropes. Suddenly, Nate made a small mistake, a slip. It was quick and shocking. James, who had just finished his own climb and was getting ready at the bottom, witnessed the critical moment. He noticed a sudden change in Nate's movement, a slip or a misstep, subtle, yet catastrophic. In the blink of an eye, Nate lost his grip and fell more than 200 feet from the rock surface to the ground. He couldn't catch himself because he wasn't using his rope. In an instant, the day changed from a regular climbing session to an urgent emergency. James and some other climbers ran over to help Nate as soon as he hit the ground. They found him not moving and unresponsive. They immediately began CPR and called for help. Help came fast. About 45 minutes after Nate fell, a helicopter arrived, and a paramedic came down to check on him. But despite the efforts from James and the others, the paramedic confirmed the worst. Nathaniel Takatsuno had passed away from massive internal injuries. This accident made Nate one of 50 climbers to lose their lives to the sport in 2022. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay bold and live brave.